seems like a fitting spot to talk about the inner path. Here, in a dry seasonal riverbed where the mountain stream carries the rain water du during the winter months here in Mallorca. And it's pretty dry and arid during the summer months and outside of the rain. But it's beautiful here because all the shapes, though dry and frozen in the repose, remind in the way they are and have been scattered that at some point quite a powerful stream, at times torrent, carries all these waters down from the high elevated areas into the valley of life. To talk about the inner path, there are several approaches we can take, of course, several angles we can enter that. And perhaps one fitting one for now would be is that the inner path is a certain attitude which comes with the realization at some point, sooner or later, that every real change, every real transformation happens within and how it then may manifest on the outside is really secondary, not that important. But what is inner path? If we are to take that, let's say, perspective of everything being energy and everything vi being vibrations, varying degree of density of sound, kind of popular perspective in today's um, sciences and in new age that everything indeed is just that sound the ocean of sound but where that sound emanates from and if we agree that this sound manifests itself through the myriad of forms and phenomena as this phenomenal plane of existence that we all partake and enjoy so greatly. Enjoy because it's really marvelous, it's beautiful, it's thrilling even, it's filled with joy. But of course the downside of it is that it also feels or filled with the opposite of all of that. So where is this disparity comes into when we talk about the inner path? If this world of forms and phenomena is nothing other than manifestation of that eminent which gives rise to it all, why would then on the outer plane of existence, the so-called physical manifestation of this reality, everything is so much subjected to polarities. Well, again, before we begin to give qualitative answers to why that is, let us look further into the reality of what do we mean by inner versus outer? For example, tantric philosophy 
operates with this perspective that there are two major movements, or rather there are two major categories in being. That which is exemplified by utter stillness, silence, unfathomable, impenetrable silence of being, stillness. And yet within that silence, within that stillness, there is this throb, this movement, this quiver, right at the heart of it. And that quiver, that throb, reverberates and gains, if you will, reality of its own. It is spoken of as Shiva and Shakti, respectively. Shiva as that absolute silence, and Shakti as that power of that absolute silence to contemplate its own nature through movement. So, from here on, if you will, the two movements are set in motion. The movement that carries it all out, as it were, emits out of itself, out of its own plentitude, spills out as that plentitude, and carries as the rivers down from the heights of the mountains into the valleys to fertilize, to fecundate, and to become what we know and speak of as life in all its multiplicity. And there is this opposing, if you will, complementary movement, which is the movement of withdrawal. So just as there is this emission, there is this withdrawal, ebb and flow of awareness within itself. It's not even spoken in terms of taking place at some point, even if to give birth to space-time reality, to the fabric of space-time. It's not even spoken in terms of an event. Let's say someone may suddenly get this idea that, oh, that, that may be what the whole talks of evolution and, and involution is all about. Yes, to a degree, but what we speak about here is rather that what happens simultaneously at all times, at all levels of creation, at the infinitesimal level and at the level perceivable through the senses, just as we observe the reality of what it means to be alive, what it means to partake in this existence. So this principal movements, the movement that emits its own plentitude outward, as it were, as the world, and that complementary movement of withdrawal, that waves that brings all this bow back only to repose at that infinitesimal level where everything subsides in the cavity of one's own heart. So the inner path or the inner work here is understood to be tapping into this wave of withdrawal because the outward going wave is already being enjoyed by all of us. It's as it were already being taken for granted. Let's face it, all we know about ourselves, the world, is that 
what is exemplified by that outward wave, that outward movement. So at a certain point, the possibilities, as it were, to find that what reconciles this all too apparent polarities where every joy is followed by a sorrow and every light shade has is its darker counterpart. Sooner or later we begin to realize that just living at the level of that external outward flowing mode of being will not suffice for fully embracing that what we consider this life and we will develop a little further why that is being spoken back in relation to life. And this other complementary movement, this movement, this wave, which takes us back to the essence of who we are, to whatever degree. Not that all of us immediately experience the depth, the sheer magnificence of our being with the first turning within. Yes, there are some exceptional beings, but they're, they're almost stand as exception, exceptions which confirm that that's not the rule applicable to the most of us. And for the most of us is really beginning of a spiritual journey. So in other words, I've often said that in the early years when stepping out to do this work in a public area in the public domain I felt like pointing out that the real journey begins with that realization that no matter where we go no matter how far we travel outwardly no matter how many pilgrimages we've done no matter how many rituals we have done no matter how many habits we have changed no matter what we have tried and tested to improve ourselves, there comes a moment, moment in time, a point, a certain point when the turning, that complete turning, takes place and the journey begins. Because the, then the journey is no longer measured by what happens to us in this sphere of life. The journey is then spoken of as that inward journey. It's the journey of the return. It's that homecoming, poetically spoken often by poet mystics in East and West. And that homecoming is really riding the waves of withdrawal. It can be spoken about in, again, a variety of ways, as awakening, as that major shift in one's perception, as realignment, as the ascend of Shakti. It can be spoken of as the awakening of that dormant force which lays at the base of our individuality, which gives rise to our individuality and with that gives rise to the entire outside world that awakening of Sri Kundalini as it is spoken in all, absolutely all, yogic traditions. It can be spoken of in terms of that awakening to the Gnosis. And one way or the other, it's the journey of withdrawal of all this realms, progressive realms of manifestation, one into the other, just as the life force withdraws from respective psychic centers as it gobbles down 
all this world of physical appearance, world of forms and phenomena and attachments, attachments to physical realm, to possessions, to life itself, physical life that is here. Withdrawal of all the emotional gamut, withdrawal of all the area associated with that individual will, all the way into the domain of pure feeling, from there into the domain of pure level of resonance and into the domain of what is often spoken of in Indian at least tradition as the domain of ether only to find its conclusive stages in further withdrawals into the realms where the polarity itself is being bridged, reconciled, where the universal will becomes one and the only will, again, in certain traditions spoken of as the will of the Creator. All these are stations of the cross. All these are marks on the path of the internal process of homecoming. And the inner path simply exemplifies that what necessitates the completeness of the realization of what life is, because upon that realization, which is absolutely inconceivable without the aforementioned process of internal withdrawal of that internal trajectory, the way the world is created is the way this world is being reabsorbed all the way back into the realm of thought and where the thought itself is transcended so as to partake directly in being uncoated unperturbed And yet, that journey itself has a return. So therefore, the inner path can also be seen here, not exclusively in terms of just riding that wave, that inward wave that brings us back into the essence of who we are. But perhaps more importantly is the wave once it merges with the source, is then recognizing itself in the phases of integration, in this world of formants and phenomena, for what it is. And the journey is, as it were, being concluded in realization of utter oneness of all life, of all creation. Because this world of forms and phenomena is nothing other than essence taking form. But just living at the level of the form is not enough. That will not suffice. If that was so, there will be no spiritual teachings, there will be no lofty philosophies, there will be no perennial traditions whatsoever. It will be given to every human being. It will be, as it were, as a given to enjoy by everyone. But that's not the case. Certainly that's not the case in our day and age. Therefore, speaking about it um, will not do full justice if we do not mention the biases that are still so prevalent in today's understanding about this internal path that internal path doesn't require anything, that somehow internal path is just that, contemplating about this 
and that amounts for self-realization. It is not. Self-realization is a visceral process, visceral pr process of reabsorption of every category into a preceding subtler one until this is all reabsorbed into pure being. And again, going back to what have been said earlier, some beings are more gifted, perhaps, on the account of certain work being done at a certain time, maybe not in this body, and they take it where they've left it. But for the majority, the work continues, and that inner path is marked by a lot of internal signposts, if you will, which if and when interpreted properly, with due insights, without jumping into any conclusions, without trying to interpret it from the point of view of this extremely elusive nature of what this individuality is made of, all the way to the superego, then the internal path is a path of beauty in its own right. Because every stride, every insight, every realization is accompanied by integration. And that integration is being brought out into the field of life because that's the way this whole existence sits together in terms of that Shiva Shakti embrace, in terms of that awareness and the power of being aware of itself, in terms of how being and existence are one and indivisible reality. So, these are just some thoughts that came to in this moment in response to this what the inner path may be. And whatever that is for you, that's what it matters, really. Because it has to be your inner path. The whole point of the inner path is that it has to be owned. It has to become one's own. There are many pointers out there. There are many perspectives. But one always walk home alone. And that's another side of the inner path. That we are together, but this work we do alone in the deepest solitude of our being.